We are from Zaporizhia. Ah, and you're both from living in Ukraine? Yes. yes. This How, is my mother. Well, a lot of Americans are watching this now. Uh, do you have something to say to them? We are very happy that your president, Joe Biden, mm. helps us a lot. Mm. We, we are very grateful to him, very much grateful. We feel that he's defending us all the time mm. and we are very happy. Mr. President! To Ukraine, sir. Yes, I call this genocide because it's become clearer and clearer that Putin is just trying to wipe out the idea of being dead and being Ukraine. And uh, the, mount, the evidence is mounting. Good different than it was last week, the more evidence is coming out of the, literally the horrible thing that the Russians have done in Ukraine. And we're going to only learn more and more about the devastation. Guys, this morning when I arrived in this nondescript kind of old building, I would have had no idea what was inside, that it houses currently 130 Ukrainian refugees and how much they're helping. Uh, let's play back the day to show you what it's like. Well, it's perfect timing. The medical volunteers are just ready. Uh, so, we are here with Tatiana and Alishka. Uh, you're one of the, the managers? You're ma yes, manager here? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for, very much for what you're going to do. And Thanks, Aga, you're going to show us around a little bit? Yeah, I would. I would. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Okay, see you. Right. So, um, do you, like, what was this building two months ago? Like, uh, February, you know, 24th, before the war, like, before the war started? Now it's like a hostel with hundreds of Ukrainians that they're helping, but what over, was it before? Over the hundreds. Uh, it was an uh, empty uh -huh. building, completely empty building. We need uh, we need a space for a foundation because we collect uh, stuff for the Belarusian border up mm -hmm. to the last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were looking for the space to you know to collect the stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Monday we had a um, meeting uh, with the owner of the space of this building to sign the rental agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Monday, and it was uh, third or full day of the war. Mm. And the owner said, if you'd like to help of also the refugees from the Ukraine, you can uh, rent the uh, rest of the building. Oh. So we did it. And during two days, uh, we prepare all those spaces, all the, the, those uh, um, rooms wow. to get the refugees there. All right. So this is Anya. She's one of the youngest volunteers here. Uh, why did you decide to come help? When I am helping uh, to other people, I feel that I am worth, uh, that mm -hmm. I, I, I mean something for them, and uh, I feel better. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, I uh, understand the situation because my boyfriend is from Ukraine, mm -hmm. and uh, he, his family is uh, also my family. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they are all in Ukraine uh, now, and uh, I know how uh, people here feel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I want to make their uh, life uh, a little bit better. Uh, are there many young kids here? Uh, yes, uh, there are kids in uh, every uh, every age. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, even uh, little babies, like mm -hmm. one year or half year. And older kids like to do it, and uh, we have uh, such a beautiful uh, artwork also here. Uh, everyone uh, is uh, drawing what they like or speaking about Ukraine. They are writing Slava Ukraini everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, they like uh, many uh, activities too. Uh, here we have documents, and we are. Uh, uh, and we are doing uh, 
documents for people who come here, uh, such uh, reg registration, registration. Uh, here uh, are some uh, books. When we started, there were nothing uh, exactly. There, uh, there was uh, only a floor and. Uh, was uh, oh, nothing yeah. uh, so in uh, uh, two days uh, we did a kitchen we did uh, uh, this table and a few things to uh, people to live here wow that's so cool and all these books and everything were they donated uh, yes there are books uh, for the kids uh, they are uh, gift from the Polish people mm -hmm. uh, so um, most of them are in Polish but uh, the uh, books uh, stars uh, give us also <coughs> in Ukrainian yeah. or Russian Kruta is story uh, Ukraini yeah. uh, um, uh, um, it's like, like uh, cool stories from Ukraine yes Oh. Uh, and, uh, I am also uh, a uh, um, Serbian uh, 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 searching in the internet uh, many uh, uh, pages and activities for kids and mm -hmm. also uh, books uh, because now uh, there's no, uh, uh, a lot of not enough, yeah. Well, Jenkuya and uh, Diakuyu. Uh, well, I think there's a lot of other kids around your age, not even kids, but like teenagers, right? 16, 17, and they think they cannot help. They, they think they cannot volunteer. What, what will you say to them? Uh, well, I think that uh, helping is for everyone. Uh, everyone helped when I, when I was in the other place. There were a lot of kids as volunteers, like uh, five years or six. They were uh, even drawing. Uh, Diakuyu, Jenkuya. Thank you very much. Slava, thank you. Slava. So this is one of the rooms? Yes, Can you it is uh, one of the rooms of my, uh, one of my favorite uh, family. Uh -huh. It's not uh, in five stars uh, uh -huh. quality. But, but it's much so better than uh, sleeping in the cold, right? Yeah, it is much better. So this room, like uh, before, you know, everybody came, it was just empty. There was no yeah, bed. Like, and where did the beds and the bedding and all this no, come from? Just floor and the walls. There was nothing here. Wow. And where, like, how did you get the beds and the bedding and? From the donation. Okay. And how do they? How do they find you? Or how, like, how, like, is it, are they so, Polish people? Or yes, we uh, we have a website, and we of course uh, have a, a fan page on the fan, uh, Facebook. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, we are we are working our f um, last half a year uh -huh. for the refugees, uh, so uh, we work well known on mm -hmm. the market okay. uh, uh, of volunteers and the foundation uh, mm -hmm. field so before um, you were helping uh, the ukrainians from this war you were helping uh, from the refugees from belarus yes okay we are helping uh, both of us yeah because we send uh, all the time we send the uh, parcels to the refugees camp mm -hmm. we take care of the refugees uh, which are, uh, are waiting in waiting here for the uh, refugee stay mm -hmm. over six seven years because it takes a lot of time to uh, so we uh, we take care of them we help them with the um, uh, law uses and we help them uh, sending the parcels with material help and of course, we help them uh, to find the work, find the, uh, the school. Mm -hmm. Then we still help the people uh, in the forest on the Belarusian uh, mm. border uh, because we sent a parcel with the um, 
eight parcels, uh -huh. and then we we have we manage this hostel, this place, and we also traveling to uh, abroad to Ukraine mm -hmm. with the uh, medical and help. Wow, nice! And what are people doing in the forest in Belarus? Yeah. That's the sad story. They try to go across the border, and then they, you know, they are in an awfully uh, situation because all the guards, uh, both sides, guards. <laughs> To speak sorry, talking sorry, it's uh, going to Germany. It's uh, no, no, go, no good, no water, no food, no time. Humanitarnej, profesjonalnej pomocy humanitarnej tym ludziom. Oni nie mają nic wspólnego z polityką. Stali się ofiarami politycznych ruchów reżimu białoruskiego. Ale to są ofiary, to są ludzie tacy sami jak my. Apelujemy o udzielenie im pomocy. Za chwilę przyjdą bardzo głębokie mrozy. Nie chcemy, żeby w naszych lasach, na naszych granicach zamarzali ludzie, całe rodziny, dzieci, matki, synowie, bo tu jest też bardzo dużo bardzo młodych chłopców. Uh, as a Belarusian uh, guards and uh, Polish guards push them mm. uh, back to the Belarus, then to Poland, then to Belarus, so they spend a lot of time in the forest. Wow. Uh, so now uh, we're going to try to talk to a few of the Ukrainians and uh, see how they are doing um, and hear from them directly. <laughs> So that's the space. The room uh, belongs to the volunteers. It's a space they can take a rest, make a tea or coffee, okay. and talk. Yeah. And I think uh, it and would be a, other people work. <laughs> uh, 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 it would be the best uh, also space uh, place to have a talk with our beautiful refugees. Madame Olga and Madame Natalia. Natalia. Hello, thank you very thank much you for your help. You're happy that you've caught us. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah, okay. we were going to leave. <laughs> it's perfect timing. But how, okay, where are you from and how's your English so good? We're from Zaporizhia. Uh -huh. And you're both from, you're living in Ukraine? Yes. yes. This how, is my yeah. mother. You're Zaporizhia. No. <laughs> Zaporizhia uh -huh. yes. is in the south. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, Russians are around. Yeah. Yes. They are trying to get it, but they can't do it mm. because Mariupol from one side, yeah. Dnipro from the other side, mm -hmm. and we are happy that uh, they, they are haven't us. bombed our city, yes. haven't shelled it. I hope they do not. Yeah. We hope so. I hope so. Uh, how is your English so good? I need to ask. How did what? Why is your English so good? <laughs> My mother is an interpreter. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. So it but, was good. She, but it was a long time ago. But she still. She got a great experience. Yes. She worked with Americans. Oh, okay. Yes, there was one period of time. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of Americans are watching this now. Uh, do you have something to say to them? About the war, about how they can help, maybe? Yes, we are very happy that your president, Joe Biden, mm. helps us a lot. Mm. We we are very grateful to him, very much grateful. We feel that he's defending us all the time, mm. and we're very happy. Well, thank you. And um, and I think it's not just Americans. There's people from all around the world, uh, from Canada, from the UK, from all around Europe, here in Poland. How how have the Polish, uh, you know, people treated you so far? So they are very helpful, very hospitable, mm -hmm. yes, very mm -hmm. friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They help us at each step. Mm -hmm. What we want, they tell us, uh, ask us what to they do. They are always ready to help us. We are very grateful. And mm -hmm. when did you uh, flee from Ukraine? What, do you remember which date? Um, the 15th of March. Oh wow, you stayed a long time. You stayed yes. more than three weeks after We are waiting war. for a visa, mm -hmm. but we don't want to say it to what country uh -huh. the mm -hmm. sea um, but we're waiting okay but i I was, I was saying you waited in Ukra ukraine a long time after the war started we how did you feel from you know february 24th mm -hmm. until march 15th it was very scary it was mm -hmm. really awful there mm -hmm. and what made you finally decide to leave 
because the siren was howling all the time, mm -hmm. howling and howling, and we were trying to find some place to escape, mm -hmm. um, to, well, to hide maybe mm -hmm. somewhere. That's mm -hmm. why. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and now there's, I've heard there's been hundreds of Ukrainians who have stayed here, maybe, maybe even like 1,000 people in total. I know, you know, it's much more comfortable to be at home in Ukraine, but like... Sure. It's still like here, do you have enough to eat? Do you have enough... Uh... We have enough everything mm -hmm. at this hostel. Mm -hmm. They give us all that we want. Mm -hmm. But um, as a volunteer in this hostel, mm -hmm. I want to say that yes. uh, there will be uh, some difficulties during some period of time because uh, we are trying to fulfill all the needs of uh, the citizens of these hostels, mm -hmm. but it's quite complicated for now and we need some help. Okay, so uh, what type of help do you need? Some products, um, maybe, maybe fruit. fruits, maybe fruit. sometimes fruit. everything, everyone needs vitamins, like for all people. Um, maybe some transportation help or mm. and other things that they can afford or everything, everything will be like... But right at the moment we don't feel that we like, so, that we like something, mm -hmm. you see? We don't feel it. Mm -hmm. We have everything we need. I'm very happy to hear that and I would like yes. to, I would like you to continue for the next uh, wave of, of, hopefully it will not be next wave, hopefully this war will end very soon and everybody can go home. But. Uh, we definitely want to support um, this. It's not just the hostel, it's like this whole organization. What, what is the name of it? The... Fundacia Bolona. Okay. So we'll have links to it below if you guys want to donate money. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much. I hope uh, you will stay safe and your life will uh, be good. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. So one of the volunteers that you saw popping him out, <laughs> Alicia, I just heard her backstory and oh my gosh, uh, let me have her, uh, let me have her explain it. Hi, uh, I'm 19, I'm Alicia and I'm like, volunteering here for uh, about one month when the war started, mm -hmm. more than one month. And where, where do you, where in Ukraine do you live? In Bucha. And we're so sorry, like I think everyone's seen what has happened. Um, yeah. For more than six weeks, the world's attention has focused on the horrors unfolding in Ukraine. In particular, the town of Bucha to the west of Kyiv. There is one place in Ukraine which has come to symbolize the barbarity of this war. It is Bucha. It's so terrible. What, what day did you leave uh, Bucha or Ukraine? Uh, actually, I was studying here for a year and mm. uh, I was here all the time because when the war started, I wasn't there. I wasn't studying during the process mm. of studying. My, my whole family was there. And like, were you able to communicate? Like, was the internet working the whole time, or? No, no, no. One, uh, one day, it's like suddenly disappeared because mm -hmm. tanks are like shells or all the connections. So. And were they able to get out? Uh, yeah. This one day they have a vacation moment mm -hmm. when they like uh, the... bring all the things in their car uh... and move, just move. Okay. On their risk. Yeah. I think it was the, it was like one day, like humanitarian. There was a day. four day humanitarian, uh, like corridor. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, I'm happy they were able to get out. Um, but what's really sad is before Bucha, where I did you? I was in Donetsk. I was born in Donetsk and I was living my whole childhood there. Yeah. And then, well, it's like the really bad luck, like. To go from, Kinda. and it's like completely Russia's fault because, like, actually, I don't know anything about Donetsk, but, like, it's it's Russia that was attacking Donetsk, right? Yeah, sure. And it was an occupation moment that the world was like covering the eyes for about eight eight years, mm -hmm. more than eight years. 
Okay, so one of the kind of misinformations that I sometimes see online is that in Bucha, it was like, you know, Ukrainians attacking other Ukrainians. But I was like, why would they? It's not possible, right? And I think uh, maybe you can explain it better, but from my understanding, it was uh, basically Russian backed separatists. So some of them maybe are from, you know, that border town, like the border town near Russia. But it's really like Russia attacking. It's not, you know, like 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 uh, Ukraine is not just attacking their own city for no reason. It's so stupid to think about this because I know all the people. I I have a huge uh, connection to all these people. Like not connection, but I'm chatting to them. Mm-hmm. I didn't heard uh, about such occasions mm-hmm. to them like to fight each other. So yeah what yeah and it's like it's so stupid that it's like we don't even need to explain it but I, I, maybe it's russian propaganda that yeah sure but how how even it it's possible to fight your own family or friends yeah. when you're in the city when you're living whole life in the city and what what happens to happens to you suddenly have a conflict yeah. with these people all right so the other rumor or probably also russian propaganda that sometimes we hear online uh, is that people from the Donetsk region, maybe Luhansk region, uh, these Ukrainians actually want to be part of Russia, that they're happy that, you know, Putin is coming to save them. As someone from that area, do you, do you ever hear this? Like from, you know, do you feel this way or do you hear it from your friends or anyone? I didn't feel this way, but I heard about this uh, process. Like they were covered with all this information and television for a long period of time and then they were um, soaked up in the, with this information that Ukraine hates them and mm. they don't want them to be alone us and something about it. But I want to say that um, a major part of people isn't uh, isn't in this Russian propaganda, and they really want to join Ukraine. Mm. So, but they even don't have a choice now because there is a dictation, like um, um, not a dictation, but dictators mm. uh, state there. Mm. So they can't tell something uh, and uh, don't without any uh, problems in the. In the future, so my 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 granny lives there, mm-hmm. like at the moment. Has her views about Russia changed since they started attacking? Um, no. uh, she's a Ukrainian, Ukrainian, and uh, she feels like Ukrainian, and everything is she's saying is like, what the f- is going to Putin? Mm-hmm. And she even she even help were helping me uh, to attack and to like how do you call this uh, to attack progr- uh, in a uh, programmer's uh, army. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Your babushka. My babushka. Wow. Well, Ukrainians are strong. So thank you so much. Diakuyu, Slava Ukraine. All right, guys. So now I'm with Svetlana. Uh, she's a psychologist from where? Where in Ukraine? I'm from Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine, Odessa. Uh, so now you're here volunteering as a psychologist. Yeah. But you are also like running from the war. Like, when did you leave Odessa? Um, I left Odessa on the third day of the war, uh-huh. um, because uh, I didn't feel safe uh, uh-huh. in my district, and like everyone, I was. Uh, shocked when i heard the explosions Mm -hmm. on the 24th of february Mm -hmm. uh and i had some friends uh in krakow Uh, so when i heard about evacuation trains from Lviv, i just packed uh, my luggage uh, and i came to poland but uh, at that time uh, i didn't realize that that was the real Mm war i thought like i would spend here maybe a few weeks Mm -hmm. and in few weeks everyone will uh, everything will be finished and I will be able to go back home, but uh, it didn't happen still. Yeah, I think all of us are waiting. Uh, mm-hmm. So when you're here, did you, how did you start working as a psychologist here? Like, did you... 
Mm -hmm. So before I left Ukraine, I was an academic manager and mm -hmm. I also studied uh, psychology, positive therapy, and mm -hmm. I have been practicing coaching for three years. So when I came here, uh, first of all, I uh, needed psychological sessions myself mm -hmm. yeah, to be in a... Uh, to get used to peaceful life again, mm -hmm. yeah, to realize this war, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, when I finished my sessions, uh, um, I was invited to become a volunteer in different refugee centers mm -hmm. in Krakow. So I started uh, learning new techniques like how to work with people uh, when they have trauma or post-trauma period, uh, how to support people. Uh, and then I found this project Wolna Now that mm -hmm. actually is given like the, um, this is the only one project that can give this full uh, circle that people need a place to sleep, um, uh, accommodation, food, psychological support, uh, and medicine. So when people come here, they actually have everything they need uh, mm -hmm. uh, for their life. And we also have help with information. And now we are working on um, the topic that we would like to help people to find job uh, here in Krakow, or we can cooperate with different organizations who can transfer people to uh, other countries uh, to... Uh, leave or wait while the war is uh, in Ukraine. Right, so like, my question is, when people like leave the war, like let's say especially, I don't know, like were there people that you've helped that came from the places that were like actually being like shelled, like um, like Irpin, Bucha, Maripol, any of these places, did any of them come? Uh, yeah, we have here people from Mariupol, and actually we have one more hostel yes. that is full of people from Mariupol, uh, from Bucha and Irpin. Uh, yeah, so actually uh, when I met people from uh, uh, villages near Kiev, not only these ones that we've mentioned, I was shocked when they told me uh, the stories of what happened in their villages and why they left um, uh, their village. I mean, like violence and raping uh, uh, women and using their bodies, etc. Uh, and they didn't understand why uh, this information didn't appear in any news. But mm -hmm. like two weeks later, we saw these horrible photos uh, in the internet. And it's only when you hear what they've gone through that you can understand. Marina is the deputy mayor here and has heard grim accounts of how Russian soldiers treated women in the area. Wow, so, like, I, I know, you know, a few days ago we started hearing about it, um, you know, these, these violent crimes, especially against yeah. women, um, but it's, I guess it's been happening for weeks now, we just didn't, nobody knew about it. Yeah. Wow. Because some, some people managed to escape. Mm -hmm. And, like... I'm I'm assuming I'm sure that they are traumatized from this experience like yeah and even uh, if it didn't happen to families of their of that people but if they saw it yeah they're also traumatized and uh, um, everyone who is coming here they are traumatized because a lot of people uh, they lost their houses, they lost their job. Mm. Yeah, they're in a new country right now. They uh, some of them they have cultural shock. Uh, some of them um, um, lost their houses because of bombing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they just don't uh, have place uh, to go back. What's something that people can do to help them? You know. Uh, so another big question I have, you know, really for myself, but also mm -hmm. for I mean, there's probably been, I guess, thousands of other uh, people in my position who like were living there, uh, and also I guess even. The millions of ukrainians who have left we feel guilty for leaving we feel like you know even if there's nothing we could have really done when we were there um i know like as like an untrained like uh civilian like even if i wanted to fight in the war like I, they would tell me just to wait you know like there's they're only accepting people who actually are trained 
Um, and so, you know, and then there's like women and, you know, there's just people here that survived and we're okay. But do we feel bad for leaving, even though if we stayed in Ukraine, there's probably nothing that we could have really done anyways. And if anything, we would be more of a, a liability, you know, eating the food and being a target for Russia. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Is it common to feel bad for yeah, uh, actually, that's kind of normal because a lot of people who came here to other countries, they face this uh, kind of feeling. Uh, people who survived and now live in other countries for the first days, they feel guilty because they have safe place, they have food to eat, mm -hmm. you know, and some people, they couldn't accept help or they wanted to stay in, in a room with not good conditions because their family their family members are suffering in ukraine mm -hmm. they could they could eat only you know like a can yeah mm -hmm. or, or just bread some uh, simple food uh and actually people who are in ukraine right now yeah uh, who wanted to, to go to military and fight for Ukraine, but they are doing volunteering. Sometimes they can feel this guilty too, because they are not fighting. Mm -hmm. And it happens here a lot to women. Uh, so first of all, um, what, I talk, uh, what I told to women, like um, this is normal for them that they wanted to have a safe place for their children mm -hmm. and for them. So they should be thankful to themselves that they managed to escape from the war uh, and bring their children here and um, uh, when they're relieved from this feeling of guilty they start thinking of abilities that they have here for example the kids can go to a new school here mm -hmm. or to the kindergarten uh, and uh, we don't know when all the situation will be finished so actually uh, our life didn't stop we can't just pause our life and mm -hmm. wait the war to be finished we need to live the life here and those who are in ukraine even if there is a war uh, they already learned how to live during the war time mm. but have a normal life okay. it's necessary so we shouldn't feel bad for trying to have a normal life yeah and i see a lot of people are really helpful uh in europe in ukraine that's what's good about war that you know like all people united uh, to help Ukraine. We have a lot of volunteers in Ukraine. We have a lot of volunteers in uh, Poland, for example, to this place. Every week we have uh, volunteers from different countries, um, doctors, uh, nurses, uh, uh, psychologists, uh, uh, just travelers. They just come here and ask, like, we would like to help. What can we do for you? And they're ready to do any kind of job. Uh, to help uh, in the storage or to play with kids, uh, to take them to play football outside, uh, uh, donate uh, money to get food or, or different things that we need here. And actually any kind of uh, help is really appreciated right now, uh, especially attention. If we are talking about kids, they really now have this lack of uh, attention yeah? and they need to... Um, um, care to be ad uh, adapted to a new country mm -hmm. yeah and uh, they're really happy when somebody spends time with them uh, yeah okay thank you so much yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right here today sir hello So we just got another van full of uh, donations, lots of uh, baby things, mattresses. So we're gonna bring all this inside now. All right, even though I'm not the best at uh, cleaning, I'm good at carrying stuff. So happy I'm able to help bring some of these mattresses and furniture down. Come on. Yeah, no, uh, another you, you are. You're like. No. So thank you to Motorola because I, I didn't realize. I mean, at, at first I thought maybe Motorola just letting you use the van, but I realized you're also working for Motorola. Yes, we do. Where did these donations come from? Uh, they're coming from our employees. 
That's so, so cool. So, yeah, so we know more or less like what is the need like of the goods or and that's you know people are uh, collecting everything in our office and uh, once once per week or once per two weeks like we are sending it somewhere. Well, thank and you so much. That's, th that's the one of the place. Thanks so much, Jinkuya. Yeah, Jinkuya Vatsa. So now we got all these uh, goodies. So today we have some Ukrainian Renaki homemade. You made all this. Uh, how many were there? Uh, how, how many times? You know how many uh, pieces? How, how many pieces? Yeah. Uh, Four hundred plus. Uh, wow. Diakuyo, I'm excited. And we have borscht as well. That this was donated from Krakow, Dievni da Ukraini. Ah, me? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, today and also everything you're doing. Uh, I'll leave the links to donate below. Uh, so thank you so much for everything you're doing and also for the tour today. Uh, I will leave the links to donate below. Where will this money go if people donate money? Uh, so we need money for the uh, first, for the rental fee, because mm. we have to pay a lot of money for the building. Okay. There is the building in the city center, very close to the market square, so it, of course, uh, uh, makes the, the, the rental fee is not low. And it's then, a big building, it, it yeah, has 200 it beds. Yeah. Yes, we have no uh, furniture, and we have already uh, beds. We mm -hmm. have no wardrobes, no, no the stuff okay. uh, usually need, uh, people usually need. Okay. We uh, need uh, money for the activity, uh, sports activity and uh, free time activity for the kids. We would like to take them to the uh, swimming pool or to the uh, go jumping park, even to the zoo, mm -hmm. anywhere, anywhere. We would like to uh, take them off because it's not very good for them if they spend all the time, all the day together, uh -huh. the same closed space. Okay. So that's uh, uh, they, they are uh, the, the goals of our money should go. Okay, awesome. And if somebody was able to send these things to Poland, um, some things like somebody mentioned you, know, you need a car uh, and you need like a um, topic key, you need, like, like the supply, like supplies, like can people send like boxes of aid as well, like shampoo and everything? Or is it yeah, better? Yeah, of course, of course. We, we are open for the any donation, any, uh, any form of donation. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, um, because we have a lot of activities. This building, this hotel is one of our activities. Mm -hmm. We are also uh, making the transport directly to the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We uh, pick them up to the Lvov, but from Lvov they are going deep in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. There is a huge lack of everything. The shampoo, the soaps, the soups, instant food, I don't know. Everything is needed. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. So guys, uh, the, these guys have been amazing. I'll have the links below. You can donate through PayPal. You can send money through the direct transfer. And if you want to send you know, packages or parcels directly to Poland, you're welcome to. And I know this is a big ask. I don't know if this is even possible, but what they really need right now that's very expensive uh, is some kind of car. It can be used car as long as it runs because they want to uh, deliver goods uh, and also people and pick people up from to and from Ukraine. Uh, we're near the border, so it's not far, but it's, you know, they can't have like rental cars going into Ukraine because it's not insured. So if anybody in Europe somewhere uh, has an extra car or, you know, you know, or you want to do, do this big, big thing, it would help them a lot. Uh, they have two cars now. They're making trips back and forth every day, but they would definitely need one more. So if that's something that you're, you can help with, please contact them uh, directly. I'm, I'm sure they would really appreciate it. But I know it's a big ask. So whatever you can donate, you know, ten, twenty, thirty dollars, fifty dollars, whatever you can, it's gonna help so much. It feeds, you know, literally 130 people per day. Uh, houses them. Uh, they're amazing here. So I'm gonna continue coming here to volunteer and help out. If you want to come to Poland and uh, physically be here and volunteer, please do so. I'll have their information below. Till then, take care, guys, and Slava Ukraine.
so guys you can see it's dark now and i was going to leave this place like i only volunteered for a couple hours i ended up staying uh for till now till 8 p.m uh really good people really good stories just sitting there and just like talking to people i mean um when you're here in person and you meet the people who have fled the war twice it, it really it's heartbreaking so i uh, really want to do as much as i can to help these guys uh i've donated personally 500 dollars uh thank you so much to the gofundme supporters who has helped raise this money and i would love it if we can at least match that so i'll have the link to their paypal in the description below and let's try to get them some money to continue these services to expand and to help even more families they really are full service it's one of those few places where people can go have a place to stay but also have food have medicine uh, have you know help with their visas and jobs and just feel safe and supported so i'm happy that they exist i'm happy to have came and seen it firsthand how many people they're helping Yeah,